Okay. So again, good afternoon. I know just a few more people entered, so I just want to say hello. I, I want to welcome everyone to our Live Well and Stay Healthy webinar series brought to you by the Family and Community Health Sciences Department of Rutgers Cooperative Extension. My name is Rachel Tanzi, and I am the Senior Extension Associate for FCHS working out of the Monmouth County office. I will be the host today and also presenting here with Joanne Kinsey. I'm excited to be hosting this presentation on food and mood because I definitely think it's a topic we can all benefit from and there might be things that we're already aware of or new things we possibly will be learning. Before we move on, I just want to go over a few of the webinar logistics. You are all muted and your cameras are turned off. We please ask that you do that and keep it that way for privacy issues. And at the end, we will have time for questions. You can put any questions um, that you might have for technical issues in the chat box and you can also put any other questions you have for the pre presentation in the Q&A box and we will be getting to them at the end of the whole recording. Okay, so as we move on, I just want to explain our dynamic here of Rockers Cooperative Extension. We are part of the New Jersey Agriculture Experiment Station and we work in many different areas where we have our 4-H department, we have agriculture and natural resources, we have our marine sciences, fisheries and aquaculture, and then we also have the family and community health sciences department, which is us, Joanne and I, and we are housed in 20 of the 21 counties. So um, it gives me great pleasure today to introduce Joanne and myself. And as I said, my name is Rachel Tansy. I am in Monmouth County, my bachelor's degree is in nutritional sciences from Rutgers, and I have a master's in holistic health from Georgia Court. I have been with the Department of Family and Community Health Sciences now for just about 20 years, and my focused areas are on nutrition, health, worksite wellness, and sharing our work through this virtual world we are adapting to still currently. I would also like to introduce to you Joanne Kinsey. Joanne is a Family and Community Health Sciences educator and an associate professor at Rutgers Cooperative Extension in both Atlantic and Ocean counties. We are all funded through the New Jersey Agriculture Experiment Station. Ms. Kinsey has her master's degree from Drexel and she is certified as a workforce wellness specialist and a registered yoga teacher. Her specialization areas are nutrition, worksite wellness and healthy lifestyles, human development, laughter therapy, and technology and education. She has also developed the Healthy on the Job Workforce Wellness Program, which provides evidence-based information to employers and their employees. Joanne also enjoys making simple online recipe videos for our consumers. Today, we will both be discussing and provide some simple tips on how to be mindful of the foods we eat and how that can affect our mood and vice versa. So without further ado, I will hand things off to you, Joanne. Thank you, Rachel. I'm happy to be here today and happy to be working together on this project and so glad that people took the time to join us. We're really, uh, we're pleased to have you here. So we're gonna talk about food and mood today. And you'll know that uh, by the end that food influences your mood and that your mood also influences your food choices. So um, we'll kind of dive into that a little bit deeper as we move along. But you probably have wondered, or maybe you've noticed when you observe other people, um, like the child in this picture, what are the effects when you don't have good eating habits, when you're not getting the nutrition your body needs and maybe you're having too many snacks or too many high fat foods or whatever. Um, there's lots of consequences for that and not just for a child in this picture, but for everyone. But I think you can probably relate to the mood <laughs> or the angst on this child's face, right? Sometimes, uh, you know, we, we are just in a mood and we have to figure out good ways to handle that, um, to get out of it. So um, we'll kind of backtrack just a little bit and talk about what the effects of poor eating habits can be. Um, obviously, you know that you can gain excess weight and there are a variety of health issues that that can start to trigger if it hasn't already, um, if you're overweight. And this is why your doctor tells you 
you know, you really need to take care of yourself, stay within a healthy weight range if possible, keep your BMI at a healthy range on all of those numbers because uh, too much weight puts too much stress on our bodies, on our physical bodies, and also on our brain too, and our emotions. So um, there's also changes in our, our body functions too. And of course, all the things you see here on the right-hand side, especially um, the top several, are what, what we are teaching about in efforts to prevent people from getting to the point of having heart disease and high blood pressure and uh, cancers and diabetes and that type of thing. But if you don't eat a healthy diet, you see that these type of situations can really present themselves because your body needs to be sort of in balance between the food you're eating, the physical activity you're getting, the amount of uh, fluids you're getting into your body with water and so on. And when you're out of balance, disease really takes advantage. And some disease feeds on sugars in your body. So we need to really be very careful about that. But when you look at those uh, body functions, you can see that there's all kinds of issues, you know, um, that you, you may have, or you may know someone who, who has um, a friend or a family member and how difficult these issues, diseases, situations are to deal with in your everyday life. So, um, what you eat influences your life in so many ways. But let's take a look, you know, at the list here on the left. Yes, it influences your mood. And that's what we're going to be talking about mostly today. But these other things, the food cravings, energy level, um, the blues, your stress, and your uh, sleep-wake cycle are all a part of what you're eating. So it all plays together. It all leads to either a very uh, good optimum health, or it can trigger some things that make you depressed or tired, can't sleep at night, um, eating uh, foods that are not necessarily good for you and having cravings. But all of that affects your life in so many ways. So we're going to learn about how to try to counteract that as much as we can. Okay, we're going to get a little sciency here for uh, just a few minutes to see how food does impact your mood. Okay, you've heard of neurons, and these are the little uh, little pieces in your brain that connect to other neurons, and messages get sent back and forth through those neurons in your nervous system. Messages about um, what to eat, uh, what you're remembering, making your body move various ways, uh, like you know, walking, for example, how to sleep, how much to sleep, and all of the, the mental brain work that's going on. So what's happening in your brain is very important to your body, obviously. Keeps your body going, right? Along with your heart. So it, they found through research that if there's not enough of these little neurons and neurotransmitter messages going back and forth, that it can uh, decline our physical, emotional, and mental processes. So you usually hear us talk about the physical processes, you know, in terms of how your body is feeling, but the emotional and mental processes are also very important too, because they all work together to create who we are. So if you're over consuming too much food or over consuming foods that are not good for you, if you're uh, eating, uh, you're not restricting fats. If, you're, if you are restricting fats, I mean, your body needs fat. So we can't say don't have fats. You, your body does need some fats, but it needs a balance of that. If you're over consuming too many carbohydrates, uh, some of you probably know what I'm talking about, especially if you're pre-diabetic or you're diabetic. We need to kind of have some control over that because if we don't control the, uh, the amount of food, the amount of fat, the amount of carbohydrates, then that creates an imbalance in our bodies. And that can trigger um, these, these issues, depression and irritability 
There's also food cravings and mood swings too. But how about your thinking and your memory loss? We need to work hard to put that all of that off, delay it as long as possible. And a healthy diet is really the bottom line of it. So you've heard of serotonin, I'm sure, probably uh, from your doctor, if, if not anybody else, but serotonin helps to regulate your mood in some really good ways. Because if you have high serotonin levels, you can be feeling like you ha are having a great mood and it can increase your mood and it can help you to fight those food cravings. Because when your serotonin level is low, you will have food cravings and probably not the kind of foods you really should be eating. Um, serotonin helps you to feel less, less pain, to increase your threshold of feeling pain, and it also helps you sleep. So you can see that serotonin in your body is a good thing. We need it. If you have low numbers of serotonin, look what can happen. Obviously, not getting enough sleep and you have those mood swings and possibly depression, and you will crave various kinds of food and you will be super sensitive to pain. Um, when people have an imbalance of serotonin, they can be very aggressive in their behavior and it can be difficult to regulate your body temperature. So when you look at that list, if you have low levels, um, what the result can be can really be a state of unwellness or even worse, illness. And that's what we want to work to, uh, to make that situation better. If you uh, are on a high protein diet, then um, it, what you want it to do is to make it be a complex carbohydrate with protein diet. And that helps your body to create more serotonin in the brain. So you've heard us talk about complex carbohydrates before, and we'll talk about it a little more, but that's really where a lot of your energy comes from as it is part of protein and is paired with proteins. So uh, it can help improve your mood and that'll help you to deal with those cravings, especially those kind of bad cravings. So what about sweets? People always say, well, sweets really make you feel better, don't they? Well, that's a pretty slippery slope, actually, because as you see in the first statement, it may make you feel better temporarily. And it's pretty much a very short-lived feeling better. So um, that quote from uh, the Monell Chemical Senses Lab in Philadelphia is a pretty good one because it makes sweets make you feel like you have rewarded yourself. It makes you feel sort of like a high, happy feeling. Unfortunately, it doesn't last very long because your blood sugar level will go up very, very quickly and then it'll come down quickly. And when it comes down, it usually goes even lower than where it started. So then you start craving more carbohydrates or sweets to bring that level back up. And then you're on the roller coaster where then you're coming down again. And your body doesn't deal with this very well, this roller coaster type of feeling where your blood sugar level is going up and down. It actually makes your body uh, crave more of the sweets that you're already craving. So if you want to stop those cravings or help to slow it down a little bit and manage it, then you're going to look for snacks or sweets that are rich in car complex carbohydrates. Okay. And we'll talk about that a little more. Also, maybe foods that are low in calories and fat. And you probably would have guessed that one, right? And foods that are high in vitamin and miner minerals, because those foods will help you feel full, satisfied, longer than something that's just a simple carbohydrate like candy. So how do people get the blues and why, why the blues? And when people get the blues, they very often turn to their favorite food, right? And <clears throat> excuse me, their favorite food may not be the best food for when you're feeling in the dumps because it's probably not going to help you get out of that feeling. So how about, don't answer the question, but think about it in your head. 
what makes you feel better when you're down in the dumps? Is it cookies, ice cream, candy? Very often um, when people are feeling blue, they want something that is sweet, that is salty, that is crunchy. And usually there's high fat as well. That's just the tendency that people have. So you may be thinking, wow, yeah, okay. When I'm really down in the dumps, I just wanna consume a whole lot of these foods. It's really not the best idea, although you think it is at the time, and it may make you feel better for a very, very short period of time, a couple minutes, because what you're actually doing is you're, you're making it the situation more difficult for your body, okay? Because stress increases and causes that craving, <clears throat> excuse me, for carbohydrates, and it helps to increase those levels of serotonin and tryptophan to help ease depression. So it lasts for a little bit of time, but then you fall into the roller coaster again, where your body is saying, oh, okay, that made me feel good. The sugar level goes up and then I'm not feeling so good. I need more. And you go up again on the roller coaster and you go up and down. And what happens when you're doing that is you're actually consuming an awful lot of calories and probably fat and sugar too. And that is what is going to wreak some havoc in your body. So you need to kind of be careful about what you're choosing to eat when you're feeling down in the dumps, because chances are the food you're choosing is just making the situation even worse. You don't want that. So let's talk about complex carbohydrates. These are actually the best uh, food sources and fuel sources for our body because our body can use this very efficiently. Um, complex, complex carbs are digested more slowly than just your sugary, refined sugar types of carbs. So that keeps your body feeling full on, and satisfied a little bit longer. So your complex carbs really, really win in that kind of battle. They also keep your blood sugar level on an even keel. So you're not riding the roller coaster going up and down with your blood sugar level. If you take complex carbohydrates and add protein and fat together, now you're starting to work towards having a balanced diet. So what we have written here in red is really kind of a summary of that, that starting your day with a complex carbohydrate rich breakfast, something like oatmeal and fruit, uh, and some uh, protein in there, probably milk or something, that helps you to increase your serotonin levels. So this will help your body have lots of energy, but it also helps your brain function, keeps you able to focus, be more creative, and helps with your memory too in the early part of the day, kind of gets you through to lunchtime. If you are full from uh, a nice breakfast like that, a very balanced breakfast, then you're not gonna be looking for snacks too much because your body's gonna take some time to be working through um, what you've eaten. This keeps you interested in, in having foods that are good for you, keeping you interested in having those high uh, energetic type protein foods that help you to feel good. They make you feel alert and have energy. That's what we want to see happen to you is start off with a good, a good breakfast. And I, you've, I know you'll probably be hearing that forever, right? How good breakfast is. And I know some of you are probably saying, but I don't eat breakfast. Well, okay. But maybe, you know, even a little later in the morning, you can have something that's really good for your body that will set the tone for your day in a really good positive way. So what if you say, uh, I'm really not... Uh, eating some of those high fat, high sugar, um, high sodium foods, but I'm going on this roller coaster on the all the time. Well, some of the things that cause that roller coaster increase and decrease in your mood and your energy level is if you're not eating breakfast or you're skipping other meals, your energy level can be decreased pretty quickly when you're not fueling your body. So think of it that way. Food, good food, is fuel for your body, keeps your body going, uh, keeps your metabolism where it needs to be. It gives you lots of energy, helps with your brain function, and so on. 
If you have meals that are too high in sugars, basically uh, simple carbs, and uh, that's going to start to upset the balance for you. And you're going to think, oh, wow, I feel great right now. But then in a little while, you maybe barely keep your eyes open because you're so tired and fatigued. So if you have too many sweets, too many sugar sweetened beverages, and not enough water in your day, you're also going to be riding that roller coaster. And that doesn't feel good for you or your body. It can, it can create headaches for you aside from feeling like off balance and like you can't focus and too tired. You can just feel a little bit unwell and we don't want that feeling. So what keeps you the most alert? Well, you may have heard us say this before, obviously a balanced diet. Caffeine is another thing, you know, that's another little slippery slope too. Some people are very reactive to caffeine and it, it, interfect, it interferes with their, um, their heart rate, maybe gives people a headache. So you have to sort of look at how much caffeine you're drinking and when you're drinking it during the day to say, maybe it's affecting me. Maybe caffeine is actually having a reverse effect on me. It's like riding a roller coaster of its own. So if it bothers you, try taking caffeine out of your diet for a few days or a week or two and see how you feel. See if you feel better. You probably will. You want to make sure you're drinking uh, enough fluids every day. And the recommendation is six to eight cups. And that is cups as in eight ounce cups. I know a lot of our glasses and cups that we have today are way bigger than that. So just think about that, that you're getting enough fluid and you need to get to these complex carbohydrates. So whole wheat breads, whole wheat crackers, whole wheat pasta, um, whole wheat cereals are very good choices. So this makes me say, you need to be a good label reader, right? You need to be able to read those labels and know you're getting what you think you're getting in terms of whole wheat products because they really are very good for you. You do need them in your diet. You do need vegetables, lots of them, and you need some starchy vegetables too. This is all about balance. Um, we encourage that you eat a variety of foods in moderation, because that is really what's best for your body and what your body needs to keep it energized. Legumes, beans are so good for you. Why? because they are a lean source of protein. You can get a tremendous amount of protein from various beans in your diet. And uh, you know, if you say, well, I don't like to cook beans, you know, like I don't wanna start with the dried beans, buy them in a can, it's okay. Buy them in a can, uh, when you empty the can, empty it into a colander or um, a, a wire basket or mesh where you can rinse with water to get the sodium off of it and also that taste of the can. But beans are so good for you. So try to think about incorporating more of that into your diet. So you need fruits and vegetables too, right? Lots of them. Your diet should be half of your diet every day, everything you eat for the whole day should be fruits and vegetables. So make sure you're working toward that because most American adults fall very far short from that mark. So you can work towards it though. Maybe try a little something new here and there, increase a snack perhaps that is a, a nice crunchy veggie with a low fat dip or maybe some fruit. So if you're having uh, this like, fatigue over overcome you and you're not having enough energy, you're probably not fueling your body at appropriate intervals. Okay. I mean, the norm is we eat breakfast, we eat lunch, we eat dinner, and maybe there's a snack mid morning and maybe a snack in the afternoon, the snacks after dinner, you need to be really careful about that. That's not the best time um, to have a snack, but maybe you need smaller meals space differently throughout the day for your body to keep it energized. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe a breakfast or light breakfast, and then a snack of something, a fruit, a veggie, a yogurt, something like that will hold you through till your next meal, till your lunchtime, and sort of the same in the afternoon, maybe some kind of a, a healthy snack. And you'd be surprised how good you'll feel 
when you've had something that's really good for your body, you'll have energy, you'll feel a little bit more focused, you'll feel really sort of in charge of your body. So if we keep our body fueled at the level where it needs to be, and we're all different a little bit, and that's okay, then it will keep us from getting really tired through the day. So if you're feeling like the girl in the picture here, maybe, maybe you're not getting enough energy or appropriate types of food energies to fuel your body because you should not feel that way. You should have consistent energy throughout the day. So how kinds of foods can reduce the stress you're feeling? We all feel stress, everybody does. We all handle it differently. Some people handle it better than others, but we can actually have an impact on the stress we're feeling by the foods we are eating. So if you're feeling really stressed, a walk is great. If you can take five, 10, 15 minute walk um, outside, it has a tremendous impact on your stress level. But if you can't do that, or maybe in conjunction, you may wanna have some pieces of fruit or maybe a little bit of a fruit salad. It makes you feel better because it's the kind of, of sugars, of carbohydrates that your body needs and can use. Anything um, with bean in it, vegetable bean soup would be a really good food to help you to reduce your level of stress. And of course, uh, if you like tortilla chips, perhaps you could try the low fat ones and some fat-free uh, refried beans and salsa. That's a very filling kind of a snack and you do have some protein there too. So that's gonna get you through the day pretty well. Popcorn is a great snack. Now I'm not talking about the popcorn that you get at the uh, movie theater that's loaded with salt and loaded with butter. I'm talking about popcorn, maybe that you pop at home and um, you make a small amount, enough for you and whoever is with you so that you're not feeling like you have to eat huge amounts of it. Popcorn is actually a very good food for you with minus the, the uh, butter and minus the salt. How about some nice fresh veggies in a dip? Um, an, our low fat dip is great. You can buy some nice low fat dips in the dairy aisle in your supermarket or you can make one of your own with a, um, a plain yogurt and add some, some flavorings you like into it. Maybe a little bit of pesto or maybe a little bit of tomato, something to give it a little, a little bit of flavor or maybe just a little bit of seasonings and spices kind of make it feel good. Pretzels are great, salt-free are even better. If you are stressed and you eat something that's super high in sodium, your body's going to be stressed more. So that's what we're trying to avoid, trying to keep you at an even keel. So what about breakfast? This, this is always a little bit of an issue with people because we, we say you really should have something for breakfast, but what can I have that, that is really the best for me? So you see here on this list, there's a variety of foods. Uh, perhaps there's something there that you like that maybe you don't normally eat for breakfast, like peanut butter on toast. Peanut butter is a super high protein food. Put it on a whole grain toast and you're gonna be feeling good after that. That's gonna really nourish your body, give you lots of energy. Obviously, cottage cheese is good. Um, low fat cottage cheese probably be a better choice if that's possible for you. People love smoothies now. Smoothies are really very big and it's kind of fun that they've caught on after all these years. You know, Putting some nice combination of fruits and yogurt and your blender for a few seconds, sometimes even vegetables can make some really, really interesting smoothie. Um, oatmeal is always very good. Oatmeal helps to uh, keep your blood pressure in check and it does have protein in it and paired with uh, low fat milk and fruit, that's an awesome choice. Yogurt, also the same thing. And eggs, you know, eggs kind of have a bad rap after a while, like, um, maybe eggs aren't good for you. Eggs are good for you. Perhaps you should not be eating eggs every day. If you have a cholesterol issue, you need to talk to your doctor about that. What would be an appropriate amount of eggs to you for you to eat in a week? But um, if you have eggs with whole grain toast and juice for breakfast once in a while, there's a really great start to the day. And if you have that, you're probably not going to be hungry before lunch. So you won't need a snack. How do we 
try to keep our moods on an even keel. What we're trying to help you understand is that we can control our mood somewhat by how we're eating and what we're eating, what we're doing. So eating regular meals and, and maybe snacks too. That's okay, snacks are good if they're healthy snacks. Having a regular eating pattern is, is very important. Just like having a regular sleeping pattern is also very good for you too. So it's kind of making sure your body has some kind of rhythm to look forward to in the day. Make sure your meals have some complex carbohydrates and protein included in them because that will keep you at an even keel and keep you from having those crazy mood swings. Keep, uh, keep drinking water or some type, of, uh, some type of beverage that is not sugar sweetened. Water is really the best choice to keep your body hydrated. That helps your mood as well. Limit the caffeine. And you probably already know how caffeine affects your body, right? Maybe you feel uh, some after effects of caffeine, like in your heart or you're feeling like a headache. That means you're having too much. So you may need to back down on a little bit and see how you feel. You need to limit the sugars. Absolutely have to, if you want to control your mood, because sugars will send your mood up and down so fast. Same thing with high fat fried foods. It'll send your, your blood sugar levels going crazy and salt will as well. So you want to kind of limit that and make sure that that's not the main part of your meal. What you could do if you haven't done this for a while is start a food diary for maybe three days. So just you know, take a piece of paper, leave it on the kitchen counter, and then jot down what you had for breakfast and then what you had, if you had a snack and what you had for lunch and what you had for snack and what you had for dinner. And keep track of that for three days. And also think about how you're feeling at the same time and see if you can identify where you need to make changes in your diet. One of the things that's very important is that you have to balance uh, the proportions of your foods that you're eating. And here on the screen, you see the choose my plate um, diagram, which shows that 50% of your meal of your diet should be fruits and vegetables. So if you get that out of kilter with too much protein, too much grains, that's going to start to affect your mood. So work towards keeping everything in balance for yourself. And I'm going to turn it over to Rachel. Great, thank you. So I just wanted to go over a few tips on how to keep our moods in balance and enhance our productivity. And that therefore will enhance our mood, which will enhance what we are craving and what, um, you know, keeping everything all in balance and in check. So just a few tips here, one of which is mindfulness. Um, we talk often about mindfulness and what does it really mean and how do we really control that? Well, you know, for, for one, um, we could say, Right now, we're being mindful in this moment. We are be being attentive to the program that we're watching. We are focusing on the talk and what you need to learn in order to gain the perspective you'll need to continue on your path of well being. We really try to also focus on uh, prioritization. So, if there's a list of things, whether it be in your home or in your office or wherever it may be, of things that need to get done for the day, to prioritize them. And therefore, as you're able to check them off the list. There is like a science behind it. As you check things off a list, it really is a satisfaction and it really shows, um, you know, that sense of accomplishment. So it's important to make sure we prioritize our tasks. Being mindful of that not everything is going to be easy for us and we want to make sure that, you know, we can try to set up our office or our workstation or whatever. I mean, I find even when I'm cooking, I need to set up the workstation of my, my meal um, properly so that I can easily grasp the things that I need and keep within reach to prepare the, the meal that I'm going to make. So it makes it a lot more enjoyable. It makes the the item kind of cook faster and nobody's my kids aren't yelling at me that they're starving um so it sort of whether it be an office type of work situation where you have you know your stapler your phone or whatever you might need your computer right at your fingertips 
It's also important to keep the items you need for any of the tasks and an ergonomic sort of workstation. Again, if you're cooking, it might just be where things are set up in proximity to where you need to cook. If you're sitting at a desk or, you know, we're sitting on a Zoom, um, you know, how are you seated? I have a pillow behind my back so that I'm sitting up straight. I have my computer elevated so that I can look at you straight on. So it's really important to make sure that your workstation is set up properly and you can keep that mindfulness going. So our next productivity tip is to cultivate your calm. So this is really creating a sense of calm and a brief physical and mental relief your body really needs to help improve your focus. We really wanna make sure the tasks that we're working on are getting your full attention and you're able to focus on the task at hand. For me, sometimes I need to step outside. I need to go in the sunshine and get some fresh air and whether it be freezing and I put on a jacket and a hat, even if it's 10 minutes, but sometimes a walk outside can just help bring that calm and that sense, a kind of clearing the mind. Sometimes it could be that, you know, you need to make sure you're getting a good night's sleep. Um, if we are dealing with the stress of not having enough sleep, that affects everything. So you're definitely going to make wake up maybe, maybe partially in a good mood, but then as the day goes on, that tiredness and the fatigue sets in and those build stressors and kind of play on our body, not only physically, but also mentally, we're not able to focus. So we need to kind of get balance and cultivate that calm. Taking a few minutes, whatever helps soothe you, whether it be music and letting your mind drift, whether it be, like I said, taking a walk for me or just sitting in the sunshine, trying to turn off your brain and have that little to-do list kind of set aside to just let the quiet kind of settle into your head and just then after a few minutes, it doesn't have to be very long, your brain will help refocus on the task that you're trying to commit to and and you'll be better off for it and then more importantly too also we we talk a lot about physical um well-being but as i mentioned your mental well-being is important so the balance between the two is actually what's critical making sure that we get up and stretch making sure that roughly every, if you're sitting behind a desk for doing whatever you're doing a task about every 45 minutes, you should get up and really just walk around two, three minutes, doesn't have to be long, allowing your muscles to move. You don't wanna let them get stiff. If you have a station where it's constantly seated, maybe making it so that you're able to stand every so often that helps your body readjust and helps positioning and your body's not get stiff. So the muscles will relax and you don't get those tense shoulders and things like that. So that then plays into our stress management. So as we move about our day and we try to keep our bodies physically de-stressed, we also need to make sure that we're able to control other sorts of stress when we can. There are signs of stress, like even, you know, eye strain and fatigue. Uh, off, I, I know I hold all my stress in my upper, upper shoulders. My husband will tell you all the time. I'm very tight in my upper shoulders. But, you know, some people hold their stress in different places and therefore can relate to your overall crankiness. Um, you don't, might not realize you're in a bad mood or you have a little, you know, cranky side to you. So here is a little um, progressive muscle relaxation technique that might help you relax. If you're feeling a little bit of the angst and the anxiety sort of building inside of you, uh, for whatever it may be, whether it's work related or just home life and, you know, in general sort of things that we're dealing with. If you just kind of take a moment to inhale and then start with one muscle group, it can be head to toe, toe to head, whichever your, your tightest part of your muscles, um, contract that muscle group, you know, for about five to 10 seconds. So you can even do it now if you inhale gently and, and, contract, let's say your, your toes and kind of make them into a little, you know, fist with your toes and tighten them up for five or 10 seconds and then exhale and slowly releasing this muscle group. And if you do that, as you move up your body for each muscle group, about 10 to 20 seconds, and then relax them, it will release the tension in your body, not maybe completely, but it will definitely help start a relaxation that you didn't really maybe know you needed. Um, sometimes I even do this in bed. If I just cannot turn my mind off and need to just sort of refocus and get myself to go to sleep, I start with this. And then by the time I get to the end, I don't realize that I'm already half asleep and I can just easily, you know, drift off. So it's very important to find the technique that works for you to help relieve that stress. 
So our happiness, happiness is key. So as Joanne was talking about, you know, how different foods will affect your mood, you might go on a roller coaster ride if we're, we're consuming too many sugars. Sometimes if we are in a happy mood, we tend to, you know, eat better too. So it's not always the, the, the foods that we eat enhancing the poor mood. Sometimes if we're in good moods, we eat the healthier things. Um, you know, if I'm outside doing gardening and kind of around the yard, I don't want to sit down and have a heavy carb loaded meal. I want to have a light salad and maybe grill some chicken or something like that. I just never want that heavy food if I'm up and kind of happy about the day and doing things. So, and, and there's some truth behind, you know, the winter when we tend to have let's just call them comfort foods where they're sort of more heavier um, items on the list, but there's always options in order to make sure that we can choose healthier options. So it's really important to not only for our own happiness, but to help those around us. So, um, people who tend to be satisfied with their jobs, their life, their family, and their values, they show a sense of pride. They show a sense of purpose. And this is really meaningful because it also kind of portrays onto the, those around us. You know, if you see somebody walking in these days, it's a little bit harder with the masks that we wear, but you know, you tend to see somebody just smiling and you look at them and nine times out of 10, you're probably smiling back because it sort of, you know, plays off of one each other. So it gives you a sense of pleasure. It, it just sort of helps you enjoy the day. And if you're that person that can put a smile on somebody else's face, that's even better because you're actually, you know, giving your happiness, just paying it forward just a little bit further. And that will enhance your mood, therefore enhancing your food choices as well. So the saying you are what you eat is not only physical Physical, but also your mental status as well. Your stress eating, we really try to, to avoid stress eating. It's very easy when we're stressed to just sit down, grab a bag of chips, something salty or fatty, you know, grab that bowl of popcorn and maybe load on the butter and the salt. That's completely not the way we're, we're looking to do this. If you would like something salty or, or crunchy like that, have the popcorn, but maybe a little less on the butter side, a little less on the salt, have some pretzels. Um, you'll get that same satisfaction of needing that little maybe carb or the salty food, but making a better choice. So if you can really think about the options that you're making and, and the choices that you're going to have, because if you could take just five minutes and, and think to yourself, why am I grabbing this? Whatever the food may be, cookies, crackers, something maybe a little bit unhealthy. Um, you, you sort of kind of take option to ask yourself, well, what can I choose that might be a little better option? Because we want to make sure that you're choosing the right option for yourself to be on a healthier path. Meditation can help with reducing the stress as well. Everybody has a different meditation path. It may be just sitting quietly and kind of calming your mind as we spoke about just a few minutes ago. It may be a full meditation practice that you're able to get into. And if you, it's something you haven't tried before, you know, you can start slowly. There's plenty of phone apps. There's things on the TV now where you can sort of see different modalities for meditation and just, again, quieting that mind, which will then reduce the stress, reduce our physical and our mental stress to help improve our mood. Sometimes even just reaching out to our family and friends. We are a, a person and our, our human beings who need that social interaction. It's very difficult right now. Um, we are all social distancing and trying to be um, more conscious of that. But even seeing each other on a Zoom is part of a social interaction. Just calling somebody, um, you know, knowing that maybe they're alone and they just want to hear somebody else's voice and asking how their day is. That will not only help them, but it will help you, that you, you did something nice for somebody as well. And it will lift your own mood and reduce a bit of your stress also. So it is really important as we're grocery shopping to not have those um, foods we're talking about really on hand. If, if, if you are the type of person that if it's there, you'll eat it, then try not to purchase it. Um, if you're the type of person who can control it, well then maybe once in a blue moon have you know one cookie instead of the sleeve of cookies. Um, but we really try to say everything in moderation, keeping things in proportion and not going overboard on any of our foods. We wanna keep balance. We wanna make sure that as as Joanne was mentioning that choose my plate, we want to make sure we have that full balance. Half the plate is fruit and vegetables, not three quarters of it. As much as fruits and vegetables are healthy for us, we still need to make sure we have the balance of the other items as well with our grains and our proteins also. 
Okay, the next one. There we go. Hydration. So hydration is actually often overlooked. Um, you know, Joanne mentioned how we shouldn't be drinking overly sugarly, sugary fluids. However, sometimes <laughs> we talk about being hangry where people get a little angry when they're hungry and they may not even realize it, but there's actually a real thing called being fangry where you're kind of thirsty and angry and you don't realize it. Um, oftentimes, you know, you'll see this in children where they're just kind of in a mood and they, they think they're hungry and you tell them to drink a glass of water and honestly their hydration helps improve their mood. Um, you know, it causes sluggishness. It will cause headaches. You'll feel run down. You'll feel sick. You, you can, you can actually make Make your body feel physically ill if you're not getting enough water and beverages that are hydrating to your body. So it's really important that you tr sort of aim for, you know, on average, we say that that eight cups a day, if you can hit the nine, if you're a woman, that'd be great. 13 for men. It's kind of hard sometimes if you're not an avid water drinker, but you know, you drink when in doubt, go for a, a glass of water. And that way it will help your body kind of get back in balance. It will help your body temperature, carrying the nutrients and the oxygens throughout the cells. So it is really important for one system if your digestive tract is in check, it will affect your circulation, it will affect your respiratory, it will affect all the other symptoms of, among your body and help everything stay in balance. So hydration is very important and it's key to staying focused to help you, ta to help you with the tasks at hand. Another thing is being active. We're not talking about going to the gym unless that's something you already currently do. We're talking, you know, just getting up and moving. If, if it's something just being physically active throughout the day, the walks, getting up, walking amongst your house. If you have to stay inside, you can even do exercises in a seated position. If you're not able to get up and walk around for mobility, there's plenty of different things you can do to be active. We obviously recommend, you know, if there's some limitations to discuss it with your physician. However, what you can do, small bursts of physical activity actually add up. There's a cumulative effect. So it's important to make sure that you Ooh, even if it's 10 minutes here, 10 minutes later, 10 minutes later on, that's really important because that can add up quickly and make a lot of changes and make a lot of health changes in your body as well. So it's important to make sure, as I mentioned earlier, you're standing up about every hour to improve your focus, standing, stretching, kind of moving those muscles that kind of get stiff throughout the day, walking, getting that fresh air helps clear your mind, helps your body just get a sense of, you know, calm and being able to focus back at whatever it is you were looking at and scheduling it. If you have a very, very busy schedule, you know, just put it on your calendar, 10 minutes walk or 10 minutes, you know, refocus or 10 minutes clarity, 10 minutes meditation, whatever it may be that helps you do that. Being physically active and just moving around is important as well as the food that we eat to help improve our moods. So turning that frown upside down, this actually is a lot of what uh, Joanne was saying. You know, when you are sad or down in the dumps, your body does crave those carbohydrates. Unfortunately, they're not always the healthy carbohydrates. Um, they are sort of a fake kind of quick release. Um, they give you a sense of pleasure because it quickly enhances your serotonin levels and therefore kind of gives you an ease of that kind of sadness or depression you might be in. However, it tricks your brain, as, as Joanne was mentioning, with the roller coaster. And then you sort of go on this ride of ups and downs. And it's really unhealthy for us to keep doing that. So it's important to make sure we're looking for complex carbohydrates, um, where they are slower for our bodies to digest and give us a sense of fulfillment. So things like our fruits and vegetables, not our sugary, um, anything that's sort of processed or anything like that. You really want those healthful foods to help our bodies stay in a even keel and let our blood sugar levels stay constant so that we can create a good sense of mood and allow our bodies to be more productive. So a diet that is well balanced, has a bit of complex carbs, a bit of lean protein, and often a little, a little bit of the healthy fats as well, because we do need those. We don't need a lot of them, but things like avocados and olive oil, things like that are, are very important for our bodies as well to absorb some of the nutrients we need. So a well-balanced diet is key. Making our snacking count. Joanne was just mentioning a lot of these earlier as well. So this is a key where we often try to encourage people. Sometimes 
I'm going to say some people don't even eat enough throughout the day. Sometimes they're just eating breakfast at, you know, seven o'clock in the morning. They might eat lunch at one o'clock and then dinner again at six or seven o'clock. Well, sometimes your body is going to, once it uses the energy that you ate from those meals, you need a little bit of a boost. So you might need that mid-morning snack or the mid-afternoon afternoon snack to give you a little bit of energy to get you through to the next meal. As we look at drinks, we're not really talking about energy drinks like coffee or coffee caffeine drinks, because that's, again, a, sort of a, a fake source of energy. We really want you to have the healthy sources that give you some nutrients like our fruits and our, you know, unsalted, unbuttered popcorn, even a little healthy trail mix, uh, maybe some hummus and vegetables or a handful of nuts would be a great snack. So all of these options are really important to get us through the day. We're not talking about an additional meal. We're just talking about a little snack a couple of times a day that helps get you through to keep Keep your energy levels up. So feeding our brain. So all of this talk has been talking about really how our moods are affected. Clearly our, our brain is what affects our mood. So these vitamins and minerals listed on the right-hand side here, B vitamin C, E, magnesium, vitamin D, all of which omega-3s are important for our brain. So we wanna make sure as we're eating our foods, we get a well-balanced diet that encourage all of these items to be maybe if not every day you can eat all of these foods but on most days you try to get a green vegetable we also encourage everyone to eat a variety of colors so maybe not the same broccoli every single day maybe spinach or kale or you know broccoli green beans something in the green family but different items because every fruit and vegetable whether it be green red orange yellow they all have different nutrients so it's important to make sure we eat a rainbow of foods um, the same with our proteins we want to make sure our protein is lean so we're not having a fattier protein but things like a fatty fish. So even though I'm saying fatty fish, that's a healthy fat. That's our omega-3 fatty acids and a healthy fat. So cold water fishes like tuna or salmon, um, bluefish, they are a fatty fish, very high in omega-3 fatty acids, very good for our brain. We have berries, often your reds and purples and blues, very high in antioxidants along with our dark chocolate. Again, we're not saying eat a whole bag of dark chocolate, have a small little portion of dark chocolate a day. Absolutely is important and helps our bodies get good antioxidants and helps our brain. So as you see here, there are plenty of different options and really the key is to have a well-balanced diet picking different foods among the different food categories to make sure you get that balance and that proportion. So here I will hand it back to Joanne. We were just going to discuss maybe taking a moment to breathe, just taking that moment to know what it is, one minute of your time to just do a little exercise and I will hand it off to you. Okay, um, let's just do a little meditation, uh, mindfulness activity just for a minute. So if you could just sit very calmly, um, hopefully have nothing in your hands. You can close your eyes if you want to, or you can just look down to kind of try to tune out everything around us for just a few seconds and breathe, just breathe. Your normal breathing, don't change it. Pay attention to your breathing. Now let's take a deep breath in through our nose and exhale through our mouth. Let's do that again. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. One more time, inhale, exhale. Now let's let our breathing come back to normal. Think about your breathing. Pay attention to your breath. And now let's flutter our eyes open and come back to here and now and where we are. Just a few seconds of a quiet, calming, mindfulness practice can make such a difference in your day, can increase your energy, your productivity, your focus, your creativity, and it can just make you feel good about you. 
and who you are. So we have some resources and how about a poll, Rachel? Do we have a poll yes. for people too? I'm going to pull up a poll right now. If we can ask everyone to please just take a moment to complete this poll. It's very important that we ask if you continue it through the end and then you should be able to submit it. Um, it should only take a minute or two. There's only about seven or eight questions. And this actually helps us learn a lot about the audiences we're reaching and the diversity that we try to keep and inform different parts of our department about the presentation's usefulness. So ultimately assists actually in our future programming. You're not required to complete this. However, we do ask if you could, it would be great for your input and we really value your, your opinion on this. So if you had any questions after you complete the poll, you can put them in our chat box and we can go through them. But I will leave this up just for a couple minutes. Looks like quite a few people are doing this. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. I always feel, Joanne, as we do these programs, you know, it's nice actually, as much as this is work for us, sometimes it's nice to get that moment of, of mindfulness and that breathing it helps kind of recollect our thoughts and bring us back out of that, you know, workspace that we, you know, this is our job. However, it's, it's a great way to enjoy the afternoon with everybody because it's really effective. And I find myself using it all the time. <laughs> And after this, if you can take a, a short walk inside your house or outside just for a few minutes, five, 10 minutes, it'll really make you feel good and kind of rejuvenated for the day. Have a good 65% or so. I don't see any questions yet in the chat box. I'm not sure if anyone has any or if maybe we covered it where everyone feels happy and satisfied and be able to take the tips with them. I'll leave it open just for a few minutes longer. If you've started to complete it, we do ask if you could just to finish that up. I don't wanna leave anyone's answers out. I wanna make sure everybody gets a minute to, to complete that. Okay, great. I think we are just about done. Um, looks like there might have been a copy of our an issue with the poll. I'm not really sure why you weren't able to submit the answers. I apologize for that. Um, there's a comment about a copy of the slides. We don't typically um, send out our slides just for um, educational you know, reasons. However, if you want to email Joanne or myself, we can send you some resources. Um, we do not have your emails here. So if you if you were looking for the resources and you wanted to send us an email, we can definitely respond with resources that would be available for you. So one question here as I let this poll run for a minute or two. Um, somebody mentions that they went from whole milk to 2% to 1% to skin then back to the whole after reading various articles it was suggested that whole milk with fat was actually important for senior citizens what are your thoughts um i i would say if your doctor made that recommendation that would be something that would be very important in in choosing to go in that direction um you know uh, assuming your cholesterol is good then maybe that is a good option for you. I, what would you say, Rachel? Yes, I, I would agree. Um, basically, you know, we always, we always refer to the amount of fat in whole milk. Yes, for brain, actually, um, it's very important, but it's more about having your doctor, if that's a recommendation, we would encourage that as well. We have, I do have an email here, so we can definitely send out some information to that email somebody put in the, in the chat box. Um, uh, thank, we got to thank you for providing the program. Appreciate and need to remind myself of these concepts. And honestly, I would say 
we do as well sometimes. Sometimes I know I find myself getting caught up in the day and <laughs> might call Joanne at nine o'clock at night. Um, and we, we kind of have to refocus and, and get our, our sort of brains calm and, and get, keep everything in check. Uh, somebody else mentioned that they was told peanut butter is not a healthy to eat because it's high in fat. What are your thoughts on that, Joanne? Uh, peanut butter is was that that was that the food? Yeah. yeah. Oh boy, um, I I consider peanut butter to be a really good source of protein. Um, it does have fat in it; it's natural fat. And if you if you want to look for peanut butter that is natural, then it won't have any added. Um, it shouldn't have any added sugars, sodium, or fat. So I would say that would be a very good choice. Um, I don't know. What are you thinking, Rachel? That's, I mean, that's exactly what I would say. If, if fat is an issue, uh, you no, know, I would look for the reduced fat, but again, these are the healthy fats. These are your nut fats. So um, these are not the unhealthy, you know, sweets and sugars and carbs. So these are healthy fats that are important for us to make sure that we have a good protein source and just a tablespoon or two. We're not talking, you know, half the jar. <laughs> so it's important to make sure that you can, you keep it in moderation as well. Okay. The next question was, could you a little, could you elaborate a little further on the complex carbohydrates? Uh, I'm going to let you answer that one, Rachel. You really know more about that. So our complex carbohydrates are, you know, um, when you hear people say I'm on a low carb diet, they, there are carbs in some of our, what I, what I would say healthy foods like fruits and vegetables. However, uh, complex carbohydrate is something that's sort of a, you know, whole grain bread and um, a starchy potato or a, a sweet potato. So even though they do have carbs, they are complex carbs because our bodies process them differently. If you were to just eat a pastry, which is also a carb, um, it's just a sugary, fatty type of food that really isn't giving us the nutrition behind it. So complex carbs are ones that are you know, um, healthier for us and our bodies process them where we digest them slowly and it keeps a sense of full this longer. So therefore it gives us more beneficial nutrients and allows our body to digest them slower and, and not have that sense of needing to eat something again in 20 minutes because, you know, that little pastry just didn't cut it. So that's where I would go with complex carbs. So we're looking for those healthier options. Um, someone actually just had a comment about milk, that almond milk has some fat, but fewer calories than whole milk may be a good alternative. And that would just be something that, um, again, you can discuss with a physician if that's the option instead of cow's milk. Um, yes, peanuts are not a nut, they are a legume, which actually falls into your bean category, um, but they are healthy uh, for us. So that would be an, an, a good option. Walnuts are also a healthy fat and a nut. That was just a comment made. So I think that is it. So we appreciate everyone's comments and questions. And hopefully just want to let you know, we will see you next month. We have our next session, which is, I have the date here, um, May, where did I write that down? May 4th on the health benefits of herbs. So you can use that same link that you used today and hopefully we will see you then. Have a wonderful afternoon and maybe get out and enjoy some sunshine. Have a great day. Thank you.